What's up, guys? Latest edition of DC Defenders Show. We've got a big one. It's week one. Everyone's ready for UFL. I'm here with my man Alex. He's on the road. It's the other way. Sorry. It's it's a little different now on this one. And we've got Jay. Alex, I'll check in with you first. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. It's great to see you. Great to see you too, Jay. Welcome to the show. How's it going? How's the uh, hotel treating you? Not too bad. It's really quiet, unlike uh, sometimes when I'm doing it from home and I've got uh, family to deal with. This is good, though. And, of course, we're joined by Jay, the defending football, one of the best <laughs> shows on there. If you want a quick hit in, like he, everything's in 10 minutes or less, I think. And yeah. it's just straight to the point. There, there's no conversation like me and Alex. We kind of go off in tangents. Jay, I don't know if you watch this, but do you know what to do? Hit the music. That's good. We're back. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I had nice. to borrow my my daughter's uh, sunglasses to get uh, as hip as my man Jay. <laughs> but. We're ready for week one. Are you guys ready? It's It's been a long time. Oh, we're ready. Can't believe it. Alex, you ready? Yeah. ready for months. Oh, man. Oh, my yeah. God. Wait, waiting for months. Can't believe it. Monday. Best Monday in a long time. Game week. Week one. Oh, yeah. There we go. We're going down to San Antonio. Easter Sunday. Uh, one o'clock Eastern, right? It's one o'clock. I believe so, yeah. Is it one or 12? Yeah, I think it's I one. I don't know. It might be 12, actually. It might be 12. Yeah, it might be, I, it might be 12. That's why I paused a little bit there. But in San Antonio, in the Alamo Dome, playing the Brahmas. Who are the Brahmas? Who wants to introduce the Brahmas? There's three of us on here, so you guys can take whoever you want. Alex? Well, I can start with Wade Phillips. I mean, he comes from good stock, the son of the, the famous bum Will, uh, Phillips of the uh, Houston Oiler fame with the Love You Blue. Um, I think I saw, I think it might have been Josh. I might have heard it on Polar Opposites was talking about of all the XFL coaches out there. He has coached in 400 and some odd games, and I think he's got like 98 professional wins or something like that. So, you know, certainly it's going to be uh, – he's seen a lot of football. He's seen a lot of stuff. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how our guys can kind of um, match up. And I'm confident Coach Barlow, Coach Kice, and, and uh, Coach Williams uh, will be up to the task for sure. But he's a good football coach. G- Jay, you're a big fan of Wade Phillips. I know you watched a lot of XFL last year. Uh, honestly, kind of annoys me when we when we when I watched him uh, on the XFL mic'd up. I don't know why. Uh, he's not a bad coach, though. He's a great guy. Nothing wrong with him. I just for some reason I love beating him, though. <laughs> well, are you a Bills fan? Because I know you're up there a, in the upstate. Unfortunately, so, yes, Wade uh, wasn't Wade the head coach at one point. He was. Wasn't he I the don't head think coach? I, yeah. I don't think I was very old. I don't know if I was yeah. born yet. <laughs> but oh, I'll Alex probably remembers it. it. Yeah, <laughs> Alex probably remembers every every down. <laughs> <laughs> Offense coordinator is AJ Smith, uh, young guy, air raid. They're going to throw a ton. Exciting and Houston. Um, I'm I'm curious to see if he can bring that same offense. I know he's going to bring it, but uh, uh, that it's going to be effective. Mm-hmm. In San Antonio, because their offense was uh, sputtering at best last year, yeah, uh, with Jack Cohn and, and Heinz Ward's offense. So, yeah, I think they've retooled a lot on offense. I mean, they the offensive line is pretty much new. They brought over the Roughnecks offensive line to San Antonio, bit or three of those guys came over. So, I think they'll probably be a little bit better up front. But you know, you talk about AJ Smith, you talk about the spread. So that's one of the keys to Week One. We'll kind of sprinkle those in as we go. Um, it's going to be very important for our defense to tackle. And I know that seems very basic, but if you think about the spread, they spread you out and they put you in space. And, you know, if they're going to complete, they're going to get theirs. They're going to get their four-yard gain, their three-yard gain. Come up, tackle, wrap up, everybody runs to the ball. Let's make keep it at a three-yard or four-yard gain. Where you get in trouble in the spread is they spread you out. They dink one out there for three or four yards. You miss a tackle, and next thing you know, it's a 12-yard gain. They're moving the sticks, and they're into the offense. So um, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I heard A.J. Smith – and I'm thinking spread. They're going to sling it around. They're going to try to get the ball in the perimeter of the running backs. Everybody's got to run the football. We really got to tackle. And tackling in game one is not necessarily a given. I mean, these guys are pro athletes. They know how to tackle, obviously. But sometimes, depending on how the the, the training camps have gone and how physical they are and how much they've worked on it, 
you can be a little rusty tackling. So I think that that's going to be one huge key to watch on Sunday, how well we tackle and wrap up. Yeah, to, to build on that, uh, the Dragons spread us out a lot last year, which was a little concerning at times. And then the uh, the Guardians kind of exposed us for a minute there too. So that's definitely something I'm looking for. Greg Williams got to tighten it up a little bit, but we'll, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> talking, about, like talking about defense, Wade Phillips, you know, he's, he's going to coach up that defense. Uh, they're going to be right. ready defensively. The veteran coach, you know, he's a defense coordinator, like everywhere, head coach. Um, what do you guys like about the defense that Wade Phillips brings? Is there anything that you guys like? Alex, I'll start with you. Me personally, their they're talent, they're stacked. And he's aggressive on defense, too. So, you know, he's going to play a 3-4. Um, you know, that's that's sort of trademark, and that's what we can expect. So there'll be a 3-4. Um, you know, so I think if we're able to – I like our ability. I'm curious, really keyed on Cameron Harris and how well we can run the ball between the tackles. They're stout up front. They're very good defensively. They're good on the edge. They're good in the middle at linebacker. They're good on the defensive line. Might be the best front seven that we see this year. I think they're legitimately that good. I think this game's going to be they're going to th this game's going to be a, a knockdown drag out. I think offensively to get back to what they want to do, they want to spread us out. They want to play 7 on 7 when they have the ball. We want to turn it into a fist fight. We've got to get between the tackles and we've got to pound on that 3-4, run the ball first to set up the RPOs. But they're super talented. They're going to bring heat. We'll see how well we lost two starters from last year on the offensive line. Let's see how well that the offensive line has gelled together in camp. But um, it, it, it's going to be a steep challenge for us, handling his defense. So as we talked about, uh, air raid offense, Wade Phillips defense. Jay, when you think Brahmas, are you more scared of the Wade Phillips defense or the air raid offense in week one? Um, it's hard to say. I'm. I might be a little bit more scared of the offense just because it is week one. Uh, last year, they started off pretty hot. I mean, I played, they played the Guardians, but they started off pretty hot, like a four-game streak, I think it was. So, I mean, we've seen the air raid before. We might be fine with it now, but I feel like they might catch us off guard with something. Do you, do you think uh, – well, we'll get to the, our defense – Alex, what are you more scared of, Air Raid or the Wade Phillips defense? Well, they had the number one overall defense in the XFL last year. And they got better. And I think they added Tim Ward. And I think that, that um, defensively it's going to be tough to generate a lot of offense against them. Uh, more on that later. Um, and I typically would say that the defense is going to be ahead of the offense and special teams at this point, first game of the year. So I think I'm a little bit more nervous about up front. I think we're going to have to run the football, period. If you think about RPOs, everything sets up off the RPOs. What comes first? The run. Run, pass, option. If we can establish the run, that's going to make them respect, get people coming up. We can start to hit those RPOs behind them. Um, they worry me on defense. They worry me on defense. Offense. Today it was announced that Garbers was – the uh, starting quarterback for week one for San Antonio. Your thoughts? Did you expect Garbers? Jay, we'll go with you first. Not at all. I thought this was Dormany's job completely, honestly. And I feel like he's going to be uh, sitting on the ground for a lot of this game, to be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know about this one. <laughs> Alex, were you surprised? I was surprised. Um, I think everybody kind of thought uh, Dormany was going to be the starter, but uh, we, at least we know the kid's smart. He went to Cal, so he, he's a pretty smart guy. Uh, one thing about him, though, that is interesting, and I don't know if, how this figures into it, but you know, we've got to get pressure on the quarterback, obviously, in the spread. Um, and I wondered if, like, we would, if, if maybe Garber's being a little bit more mobile than, I mean, Dormany's sneaky mobile but maybe this guy being a little bit more mobile if maybe they were neck and neck in camp does that kind of play into it a bit um i know that i guess the comments i saw from coach smith was that he felt like garbers had picked up on the offense really well um and reminded him out of that uh pj uh oh shoot the kid from temple the quarterback the rough pj walker. walker walker oh, yeah. back in uh 2020 so uh i hope he's not as good as pj walker but it surprised <laughs> me it surprised me yeah i i I think it is them throwing DC off with a scent. I think you're going to see both quarterbacks this weekend. 
I think Garbers does provide uh, mobility, and that's why you announce him as the starter. Now your defense is starting to worry about their mobility a little bit, and then you, you're able to add Dormady without, you know, Greg Williams just planning to blitz a – Dormady's not the <laughs> fastest quarterback. So, no. I, And I know Greg Williams is going to blitz regardless. Like, we all know exactly what Greg Williams is going to do, but if they have to worry about the rush just a little bit – Maybe mm -hmm. it's it's almost like Alex's theory of always having two quarterbacks, like the De'Ara King role, because yeah. you just have to worry about it. Even if you have to spend an hour game planning for it out of the week, that's an hour that you didn't have against Dormady, who might be who probably is the better passer, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how about slowing down the air raid? Greg Williams' defense. Jay, we'll start with you. What is the so, key? What is the key that we need? to slow down this air raid? The key is just contain the pass, I think. I think if you just keep everything in front of you, we're going to have to give up some yards, I think, here and there. But I don't know if you watched last year, but we kind of dominated the Roughnecks. And they they had Brandon Silver at the time, but it was so bad that the crowd was chanting Houston sucks. So um, we really contained their offense. And if you just keep everything in front of you, you should be able to contain it as much as you can. And the running game is probably not too scary. So... I don't know. I feel like you just got to contain it. Yeah, their running backs are not a between the ten, not Abram, not Cameron Harris. Right. They're they're scat backs the entire time. It's scat backs all the way through. They don't have a horse. They 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 have the the jaguar, the leopard on the outside, but they do not have the horse that's going to trudge through the middle. Alex, you're the coach out of the UFM. I heard uh, Brahma bullpen call you Coach <laughs> Alex all week on on the latest episode. Break down for us quickly how Greg Williams will contain this air raid. Well, I think what we'll probably do is, we're, we're, you know, I, I think the fact that they don't have the inside running game is going to help us. So that's going to allow us to play less, less guys in the box and more guys in space. And I think that's the biggest thing that, like, you know, you're uncomfortable when you're out there in space matched up one-on-one. -on -one. They'll spread the field in the spread, thus the name, the spread. They'll make you defend every inch of the field. So I think being able to put less guys in the box to really worry about that between the tackles running game, um, that's going to help. Uh, and then the other thing, too, is I think, you know, we're going to have to we, – we kept – how many defensive backs do we keep? We kept six, I think. So yeah. we'll look to – or six corners, rather. I'm sorry. Six corners and four safeties. Right. So, you know, that tells me that there are going to be a lot of different packages, a lot of different folks – playing the different personnel groupings. I don't know enough about San Antonio's receivers yet, and that's another challenge coming into game one. You know, um, you think you know from what you've seen in the past, but you really won't know until, you know, you get out there in terms of, like, you know, who they're going to, some of these uh, matchups and groupings. But I think the real key is going to be the lack of a running game for San Antonio is going to allow us to put more defenders out in space, and I think that's going to help. The other thing I think we need to do, now the disadvantage of that, is with less guys in the box, you can do a little less in terms of getting creative with your with your blitzes. And we know Coach mm -hmm. Williams likes to, you know, bring it. And and I think that's going to be the other real true test we'll probably see early in the game is uh, when we bring heat, are we putting uh, Garbers on his back? Even if we're not sacking him, are we getting to him? Are we making him uncomfortable? Um, that's a good sign early if we are. If we have a hard time getting to the passer, it could be a long day. But getting back to Jay's point, the key is going to be in the spread, wrap up, tackle. Don't let a three-yard pass become a 30-yard game. Then on defense, I'm calling Brandon Smith our number one wide receiver. I could be completely wrong uh, versus their number one corner. And the reason why I listed number one corner is because who is their number one quarter? Because it does not I, – I, I, I know I'm throwing shots here, but – San Antonio's secondary does not scare me. Like, it just does not. Their, their defensive line, I'll give it to them. Their linebackers, I'll give it to them. But that secondary, I, I think that's the weakest. And I, and I know on Brahma bullpen, I think he gave him a 10 because he just gives 10s to everything <laughs> on, when he's ranking every unit. But, like, that second, and we'll go to the, the depth chart in a second that he provided, it just does not scare me. Do you think... Tiamu has a good game against this secondary. Jay, we'll start with you. Uh, I, I think so. I think he's going to have a good game. I think with the lack of Abram Smith, we're going to have to throw a little more than we want to, um, like starting off. I, 
Yeah, I mean, our guys are going to get separation here. Um, quick passes, it's going to neutralize the uh, blitz and everything like that. So I think we're definitely going to get a lot of yards after catch on this one. But uh, fun fact, so Tiamu was struggling the first half of the year, really. Um, didn't have over 200 yards passing. The game that woke him up, that led him on to offensive player of the year, if you look at his numbers, was against the Houston, right? 278 yards, two touchdowns, no turnovers. So uh, this, this, yeah, yeah this <laughs> defense, this defense, this Wade Phillips defense, I think, I think he can he can figure it out. And without a secondary that has that true number one corner, that's like that's the guy. Um, I I think Tiama is going to eat all day. Like I know we're, everyone's worried about uh, Abram, and we'll get to the running back room in a second. But like, I think Tiamu's second year in this offense, understanding. Fred Kais's offense, you saw him get better as the season went on. You know, he struggled early on and he got better. The the, the more he was more he was more comfortable with it. I think Tiamo kind of fit like his role grew, even though I he was a starting quarterback, but his skill grew, I guess. His knowledge of the the offense. Yeah. What so about what you're Tim saying, Ward? Man, what? Fred Kais no. ate Wade Phillips' lunch last year when the when DC played against Houston. He just ate him up. Oh without a doubt. Without a doubt. <laughs> And, and like, the thing is, like, if you really look at the numbers, like, Tiamu really was struggling. Like, he had 150 yards. He would not have been the offensive yeah. player of the year through those first four or five games before he saw Houston. Houston got him on the radar for the award, really. Honestly, I'm going um, to catch a little heat for this, but I actually really like Derek King the first two weeks of the too. season, and yeah. I almost thought they should have switched, but I was wrong. Hey, Alex yeah. talks about it every every single week, and I, I think that's the reason why he thinks the two quarterback system just to show him because Derek King brought that different thing. Do we have a Derek King? Electric. I do, who knows? Who knows? We'll see. But I'll tell you what: the first two games, or the first game especially, no disrespect to 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 the guys because it's it's getting better from game one to game two. But that offense was putrid. I mean, it was hard to watch. And when Eric King came in, there was a, a a lift. And the same thing happened in the second game out in Las Vegas. When he came in, there was a lift. And I was like you, Jay. By the, I was thinking we got the wrong guy in there. But JT yeah. proved it's all wrong. He went on to have a fantastic mm -hmm. year. I think to your point, Webb, he settled down in Coach Kais's offense. Um, and, and, it, and it ended up having a great year. Another guy on their defense is uh, Tim Ward. You know, we we just cut him, uh, and then he gets picked up by his former uh, head coach, the Houston Roughnecks. Jay, what went through your head when you saw his name on the cut list first? And then what went through your head when San Antonio immediately signed him? Yeah, so I was thinking, I was pretty surprised because he seemed like a pretty good depth piece for us. Could even, you know, start here and there on the defensive line. You can't have enough pa uh, pass rushers, you know. So I, I was a little confused by that, but, you know, I guess they like who they like. And then when they picked him up immediately, I was like, oh, they're struggling a little bit on the defensive line, it looks like. Uh, they're picking up guys immediately. So maybe they're looking for a spark there. Yeah. Alex, I think I heard you talk about it on Brahma Bullpen this week. Yeah, that, w that shows that DC was very confident with their pass rush, and you know Greg Williams loves to blitz and loves those edge guys. Mm -hmm. And San Antonio might have been a little desperate, so that that could tell us that our offensive line might not have the challenge that you told me that their defense, their front seven, because if they're a little worried and they have to go make a move for a, a starter, if Tim Ward starts, that tells you that Wade Phillips isn't a hundred percent confident in that defense. Possibly. Uh, when he got cut, it popped into my mind, man, we must be good on the edge. Like, we really must be deep on the edge if, if, if Ward can't win a spot on this team. And then to your point, both your points, the fact that he was picked up so early from from uh, from us from to go to San Antonio. So uh, we'll see. I'll be curious to see how many snaps he gets and whatnot. But I think it speaks more to how good we are. Can't really speculate very much on how good or not. I guess we'll find out how good San Antonio's guys are on uh, Sunday. So this is a quick uh, depth chart that Brahma Bullten provided. Is there any name that sticks out that we haven't talked about? Because Jordan Williams is pretty good. I'm not going to talk about destroying, right? I know we're on YouTube, but I'm not going to talk about destroying. And I know Brahma Bullpen's his whole, his whole, uh, his whole 
fairy tale that he's promoting here that it's a one point game late in the fourth quarter and destroying saves the day, right? It's <laughs> th- this isn't WWE. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what happened oh, last year? <laughs> but is there is are there any names on here that you're like that's pretty good dude? If there's one name that sticks out, who wants to start? It doesn't matter. Offense or defense? It doesn't matter. Just pick one. I like the tight ends, Corey Latimer and, and Mac both. I think they have two really good tight ends. The other one that kind of surprised me that actually, um, Katie Cannon, I remember him from back at Baylor. And, uh, you know, he's a big play wide receiver that could fit really well in sort of this, you know, new offense. So he was another one that kind of really jumped up, at, jumped out at me. They seem to be very happy with their running backs. But again, and you touched on it, Webb, they really don't have that between the tackle guy. Um, you know, so um, a lot of breakaway speed. I think I had read somewhere where McFarland's got like lightning fast speed. And, you know, so he's the guy if they get on the perimeter, we're definitely going to have to run to the ball and tackle. But, um, you know, really it, it's kind of a nondescript offense. And I think they're somewhat like us. You see some offensively, you know, if you look at us from a running back standpoint, we're kind of unproven from a receiver standpoint, we're kind of unproven. They're in the same boat. You know, if you look at their quarterbacks, I think our quarterback room is better. I think our offensive line is probably better, even though they did bring some people over from Houston. Defensively, you see, you know, Patton, um, you know, there, there's a big name in Delonte Scott. You know, both of those guys were big performers uh, last year. So those are the two that jump out. But then to your point, and I think you guys all touched on it, you know, I don't see any defensive backs in this bunch that really uh, jump out. I did uh, – Brahma, uh, Joshua was talking about Corey Mayfield, the kid from UTSA. I went back and looked at his stats. He put up some really good numbers in college. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, – hell, I like Tim Ward's name, but that's <laughs> as good as I like any of them on that defense. Jay, what about you? I know Alex just named the entire team, so if you repeat <laughs> him, don't worry about it. Uh, Matt, I'll I'll single out one dude, and it's uh, John Trey Kirkland. So he was eating last year in the same system. So I'm a little, you know, he got injured halfway through the year, and then their offense totally nose, you know, nose dived. So um, interested to see how he bounces back, and if he's the number one receiver, or if uh, the injury is still lingering. So, but I do like Vasher and Cannon, and the receiving core. I feel like is pretty solid for this team. That's probably what I'd focus on. Nice. I only got one name, Brad Wing, because he's just going to be punting all day long. So <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> all right, now let's go to the good guys. So we got cuts down to 50. Um, unfortunately, the, their journey with the defenders this year is on pause at the very least. Is there a name that sticks out to you, Jay? We're going to go with you before Alex lists off the entire list. And then you don't have anyone to comment on, so we'll we'll let you go first. All right, we we already talked about Tim Ward, but honestly, Jazz Ferguson uh, is a name that I did not expect to get cut because it seemed like he was all over the social media, and they were really showing all of his catches in practice. And then all of a sudden, he's on the cut list, and I'm like, okay, um, I guess I had no idea who our receivers were going to be, but it looks like they're happy with the guys they got. So I mean, I can't really complain. Mm-hmm. Alex. If, I'll, I'll, can I name two? Yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> believe it or not, I'd say uh, Zaquandre White because they brought him in and he was only here for a day or two. You know, So they brought him in oh, and man. I thought, oh, they must have picked up something that everybody else missed bringing this guy into camp. So I thought he, you know, to come and go so quickly, that was a shock. But I think of a guy who played last year and really contributed a lot, Kentrell Bryce, that was one that kind of surprised me that he – uh, was let go. So um, those were the two. You still have plenty to pick from, Webb. Well, I was going to say Zaquander Z- White because a little bit behind the curtain here. Last week we were filming this episode with uh, Demarcus Hayes waiting for us, and we just did a whole episode of how they were happy with their running back room. They were happy with their running back room, right? Like yeah. we're f- we're talking about it, and they're like they love Cameron. They like they don't they haven't made a move because of it. And then the news comes out that Zaquander White. Gets picked up, and me and Alex have to record a, an interview with Demarcus Hayes, and then we got to re-record the beginning. So if it's a little choppy there, it's because my editing skills aren't there. But that was the name that stuck out really because to bring him in for three days. But I think uh, Coach Kais and Coach Barlow are pretty quick with how they assess guys, and either you're going to hit a home run or you're walking or striking out. So um, yeah. 
uh, other than that, really no surprise. Tariq is Tisdale is my guy because you know he's got two sacks against the uh, the Battle Hawks and he, and he only played two games. So strengths and weaknesses. That is the question of the week. You ready, Jay? Let's do it. All right, question of the week. Jay, give me your strength for this DC Defenders roster. The one strength. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry, Alex. I have to take it. It's the front seven, man. I mean, they're going to eat all day. I mean, we have so many dogs. I can't wait. We don't even need to blitz. I mean, do we need to blitz? I don't know. It's Greg Williams. We're, we need to blitz. He's going to blitz. Don't anyway. have to. <laughs> yeah, he's going to yeah. blitz. Send 10. <laughs> Alex, your strength for this roster. It's a, I, I, I'll, I second it with Jay. I think we're best on defense. I think we're extremely strong up the middle and very good on the edge. I think we've got a lot of talent in that secondary, and I really look for big things from this defense. And I think that's a good thing, especially for week one, when typically the defenses are still going to be ahead of the offense this part of the year. So the front seven, I'll follow Jay's lead. I'm not going to copy you guys, even though I want to. Um, I, I love defense, and it, it wouldn't make a great show if all three of us agreed on the same exact strength. So I'm going to go with the quarterback room. I think uh, JT in the second year, um, he'll be able to settle in. I think they're they're high on Jalen McClendon. I think I, he was in a terrible situation last year, and he was able to kind of be impressive. And I think with Fred Kice, and I think Kice really believes in himself and his system, and I think he loves McClendon. I think. Francois could be useful. You know, Francois went to Florida State. Like, that that's no joke. You know what I mean? To get recruited out of high school and whatever happened in his personal life, whatever. But obviously the talent's there. And I know I talk about this all the time, but, like, if you went to a big school and you're recruiting a big school, you've got to have some kind of talent. Like, you just don't walk on there. Like, there's not Rudy, right? Like, everyone will be like, well, Rudy, you know, he didn't have talent, right? Like that's not the typical story. That's why there's a movie about it, right? Mm -hmm. And it, I, I just, I just feel like Francois could be a sneaky pick for someone, not Derek King, but if they need a quarterback in a pinch, he might be able to fit this Fred Kais RPO kind of system. He's athletic as hell. So, um, weakness. Who wants to go first? He's got it. Oh, so All I right. get to go first. We start talking about go. bad stuff. Jay just says, "Here you go. Here you go. Right under the bus, you go." <laughs> I would I would have to say it. I don't know if it's a weakness, um, but I would maybe it's more uncertainty. Um, I'm gonna say that uh, the receivers don't do it. No, I, am. I, I didn't did say it. running backs. I didn't say running backs. I think Cameron's gonna come through. I think the receivers a little unproven. I think you know we did make a good pickup with Cootie, uh, Chris Rowland. I know they're really high on him as well. But uh, you know I, I just feel like you you lose Jackson, you lose Blair to the NFL. There's got to be some step back, in my opinion. But I'll preface that. I'll also finish the point by saying the fact that I have to pick the receivers, which is a generally solid room as a weakness, I think speaks to how good this team is. So if I had to pick a weakness, I'd probably say the receivers. Top Jay, that, Jay. your pick? Kind of stole the words out of my mouth a little bit. It's, I mean, it's because they're good, right? So when you win, right. your, your players leave in this league. But I'll I'll bounce off that. I'll go running back instead, uh, just because Abram Smith is just a huge loss, and I'm super upset about it. One of my favorite players, and uh, I think they could fill the shoes running back by committee there. But uh, yeah. it's definitely not a weakness, but it's weaker than it was before. Wow, you guys are killing me, man! I I love the wide receiver room. Brandon Smith, Brandon Smith is pretty good. You know, to put up numbers at Iowa. Like, think about Iowa's offense, right? Like, everyone is talking about, like, it's such a big deal. They scored 20 points. And he put up decent numbers at Iowa. I think Brandon Smith's a weapon. I th uh, Chris Rowland, I, I think they love him in this offense, in the running back room. If I had to go with weakness, I'm going to have to say tight ends, just because we haven't seen them, really. Um, Bra Bradley Moore. And if if you're complaining about your tight ends as your weakness of your team, you got a pretty damned good team, right? Like, hmm. like. With no disrespect to the position, obviously right. they are offensive line and weapons on the outside or receiving weapons, but they're the 11th guy, really, because, you know, you got the running back, quarterback, offensive line. 
they're, they're kind of like where you want to, uh, you need a receiver, you need an uh, offensive line. It's not necessarily, I need this guy to play left tackle the entire time. I, I don't know. It's kind of hybrid position, right? So yeah. I would say, but I like the room. I really like the room, right? With yeah. Bradley Moore. I, I, I think Bradley Moore is poised for a breakout. And I don't know if it's because he's a uh, social media darling with this uh, social media team, but Bradley Moore seems to be focused a lot. But I think he, uh, Caden Smith, I, I know that uh, Washington Redskin fans will remember him or Commander fans, whatever you want to call it, the Washington football team. Um, and Alex Ellis, right? The whole reason yeah. why I created yeah. the security blanket stat was because I was like, this guy only catches first downs and touchdowns. That's all he does. So, um, th that that would be my weakness, but I don't think it's a real weakness. Russian stats, quickly, quickly. Russian stats. Who gets the majority of the carries, or is it even within like two or three carries? Obviously, it's not going to be a hundred percent even. Jay, it, is there a guy that's going to be the leading rusher, like? Abram style, or is it going to be more balanced? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's balanced. Puka, I don't think is going to just because of his frame, but uh, Darius and Cameron are probably going to split carries maybe. And then Puka, I would use him as a gadget guy personally to add a little bit of a wrinkle in the run game, but um, I don't, I haven't seen enough of the guys. That's the, that's the sad thing. That's what I said in my video. I just, I got to see more. I don't know yet. Yeah. Alex. Yeah, it's hard with no film. I'm looking at it like last year. I see Cameron plugging in for Abram, getting 65, maybe 70% of the carries. And then I see uh, possibly Darius, well, probably Darius Hagens. Um, just looking at his build and like what I've read online about him, reminds me of Ryqual Armstead, who was the guy who uh, backed up there with, um, with Abram and got a lot of carries for us last year. And then Puka, I agree with you, Jay. I think Puka is a guy that we can, you know, put in the game and, you know, get him on, you know, maybe you, you, you swing past some out, try to get him the ball in the perimeter and see what he can do because he does have that, you know, explosive speed. But um, I think it's I think it's going to look a lot like last year, Webb. I think Cameron's going to be our new Abram. Well, Cameron, everyone talks like it's a step down from Abram. Obviously, Abram was fantastic, but Cameron, his entire – Miami career is over five yards per carry his entire like he, even when he got 126 carries in 2020 like he was over he was at 5.10 I'm looking down at, at the stats right now he had 10 touchdowns like th this guy five yards of carry what do he do in the playoff game right five yeah. yards of carry. he had 25 yards two touchdowns yeah. this guy's a big play waiting to happen Hagen's the reason why I keep mentioning Hagen's just because of what school he went to and who his head coach was at college, obviously, I know it's not the exact same offense, like I said last week, but I could definitely see Higgins playing a major role. And Puka, Jay, I think you hit it out of the park. Puka's frame, he's more of a gadget guy, which is fine to have because we might need it. Yeah. New wideout room. Who's the top target? Is there a red zone guy? I know you guys talked about it on Brahma Bullpen this week, how like yeah. the tight ends were kind of red zone guys. And What's the one name to surprise? Jay, pick one question out of there and answer it. Ooh. Uh, names to surprise. I think Bradley Moore might have a big year this year, honestly. Ooh. I think with, with losing some receivers, I think they might lean into the tight end a little bit more with the RPO. You can do some interesting things there. So that might be – that's a little bit of a sleeper pick, but I think he might have a little bit better year than we think he'll he's going to have pretty much. Alex, you pick your question. Is it the target, top target, or the red zone? What do you want to answer? I'll I'll let you since you're always letting you're getting the uh, the leftovers going last. I'll give you the probably the the question that you can get the right, which would be the top target. Um, I'm going <laughs> to stick with who's the red zone guy, and and I'm going to say I'm going to take the easy way out. I don't I don't know if we have one because like last year, even with the tight ends catching all those. Uh, touchdowns in the red zone and whatnot. And I'd love to talk to Coach Kais sometime. You know, was it by design or was it just the matchups that you got or the personnel groupings when you got into the red zone that lent itself toward those guys being able to get into the end zone? Um, so I'm going to take the easy way out and say anybody on the field could be our red zone guy. I don't think we target a, a, a guy to get the ball to when we're down there. I'm going to say probably Tamu's legs. I'll just throw that out there. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Top target. I'm going to go with Chris Rowland. 
I, I think of him being in the slot, I think he he will get the most targets. Is he going to be the big play guy? No, I think that's Brandon Smith. I think Brandon Smith, if you watch on me on Twitter, I'm posting Brandon Smith's highlights all the time. And like I said a few times, he played at Iowa. So you don't have a lot of opportunities for big plays. And he's able to make that with quarterbacks like Nate Stanley and Brad. Like, I don't even remember the Iowa quarterbacks, right? Because no one pays attention to Iowa football except if you live in the uh, – the Iowa, but and I, I know Alex loves that because you know he he's an old school guy and he remembers when Iowa was eight and four every year and ten and two and going to Rose Bowls. But um, the target is definitely Chris Rowland. Um, I I just think he fits that system. Um, he has played in this kind of system at in Tennessee State, and I, I just think he's perfect for this. So we'll go to defense. Who to watch? Who's going to have the biggest game? Jay, who's going to have the biggest game on our defense? Number 15. I mean, he's coming back off an injury. It's time for him to show up. And, uh, you know, we tried to play him last year at the end of the year, but I don't think he was, you know, healthy at all. So I think I think he's going to have a big game. And I think he's, you know, he, he always has like a pick six for no reason. So he might have a pick <laughs> six in this game. There you go. He had a couple of big ones last year, that's for sure. Yeah. Alex, who's who, who's going to surprise you? Or not surprise you, but who's going to have the big game on defense? I'm going to go with my man, Trent Harris. He comes over from Houston. He gets to stick it to his old coach. And I got a feeling that with Harris on one side, Bellamy on the other, that defense is going to be out of sight. And I look for Trent Harris to have a big game on Sunday. You took uh, – Kind of your answer was half my answer. A uh, Davin Bellamy, DB seven now, not seventeen, right? He's number seven, seven. now. Threw me, threw me off. Yeah. I thought he was throwing the ball. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. he Man, he's been se- he was seventeen at Georgia. Like I was like, yeah. what is going on here? But um, he always said the first like five games are to get his numbers. He said it on my in the interview, and then the the end it's about winning. It, like so, he always starts off hot. Um, he did that with the Breakers when he was the USFL. He did it last year. And I think with Harris on the other side, I think you might see one of those games that Bellamy takes over and he has two or three sacks. And I just think Bellamy and Deontay Anderson is my other kind of sleeper pick at safety. You know, he's in a winning situation now, not in Vegas all by himself. Um, so that, that's just my pick. What's the biggest opportunity on this defense? I know we've kind of hit it a few times. Opportunity? Biggest, Anyone? Biggest opportunity? Yeah. Um, probably multiple turnovers. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, honestly, we're we have an opportunistic defense. We give up a lot of yards. It seems like last year, but uh, when the ball is in the air, we usually catch it or it's on the ground. Uh, we just have really opportunistic, hard hitting players, and it's just so fun to watch them. And uh, yeah. we talk about all the time. Oh, go ahead, Alex. No, 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 no. I cut you off. You go. Well, I, I think the opportunity here is offensive lines obviously aren't like the NFL offensive lines where these five guys kind of play together all the time. I know Houston's bringing over three, and I, I don't know if they're going to all start, but that offensive line was in shambles last year. I think Brahma Bullpen said he would have ranked it a three or two last year. So that offensive line is still coming together. I know they've got some Houston things, Houston players, but I, I think if we could be opportunistic against that offensive line, especially week one, because the next yeah. time we see them, obviously, they're going to gel a lot more. So I, I think that's our biggest opportunity is to, I, I think you both mentioned it, have Garbers look at the top of the dome the entire game. Right. If Garbers right. is looking up at the dome, then we've done our job. Even even if it's not a sack and they're losing yards, if we're just forcing him to throw the ball out of bounds, whatever it is, but he's he's getting hit and he's feeling that turf, which is looks completely uncomfortable out of all the fields. That and St. Louis, they, that just looks like, oh, God. Like, Ford Field at least looks like it's not that hard to hit the ground. But, like, that Alamo Dome, it's just old, man. Just old. Seen its better days. Yeah. Alex, who, uh, your biggest opportunity for the defense? Getting picks. They're going to put the ball in the air a lot. If we can pressure the quarterback, you know, I think we have a chance to, you know, not only maybe, you know, get uh, Trent Harris coming off the edge with a strip sack, same thing for Bellamy, but – 
you know, start knocking this down, guy down a little bit, make him feel a little bit uncomfortable, make him second guess who they started. And then maybe he'll start throwing it to the team in the, in the other colored shirt. But I think, um, you know, we'll get pressure. Um, I do like the fact, you know, our offensive line is more gel than theirs. Our quarterback situation is better than theirs. They have a lot of question marks. I think they're better going to be better offensively, but a lot of question marks offensively too. So get to the quarterback, force turnovers, take it to the house. Alex, thanks for merging uh, Jay and my answer into one concise answer. Thank you. Damn, that's pretty good. Didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> so we'll get to our predictions. Jay, explain yourself. 24-20. <laughs> I think they're going to catch us a little early um, and Greg's going to be blitzing a little too much. And then we're going to figure it out towards the end of the game. We're going to get a rhythm. Uh, we might even see a comeback here. We might go down maybe two scores and then come back and rally. I don't, I don't think there's any way we lose this game. I think we got this game to be honest with you. It's a little closer than it should be, I think, but um, you got to be humble a little bit, right? Yeah. Alex. Last year we went down there and we were in control in the first half. And you look up, and next thing you know, early in the fourth quarter, San Antonio's leading. DC goes down, takes the lead. Uh, San Antonio has a chance at the end to win it at the end with a 50, think a 53, 54 yard field goal. The guy missed it. So they were tough down there last year. I think they're much better this year. Here's what I will say, though the key to the game this week will be defense, special teams. And don't forget about special teams. We didn't talk about it. Look for a big play on special teams. Special teams early in the season, a block punt, a kickoff return, uh, punt return. You know, special teams are going to be kind of like the offense behind the other two units. So special teams could really um, turn the tide here. But I think early in the game, like I said earlier, San Antonio wants to play seven on seven. We want a fist fight. That's, that's going to be the difference in this game. If we can line up and run the football between the tackles, control the ball, and against that very tough San Antonio defense, it could be worse than 22-18. Personally, I think that both of the defenses are stout. I don't think both of the offenses, they still have some question marks. I look for this to be a slugfest. I go with 22-18 good guys. Blowout city, fellas. This is the one blowout out of the entire weekend. Out of all four games, this is the one blowout. Their weakness is their secondary. Our quarterback's in their second season um, in this offense. He's And last year, that one game that it was like, oh, yeah, like a light bulb went off in Tiamu was against the Wade Phillip defense. This year will be that another light switch going off, right? Another light bulb going off, whatever whatever metaphor or whatever you want to put a tie to that. I think this is Tiamu's ascension to the next step and i think tiamu plays terrific i think the wide receivers that you guys were doubting come through i think you, you see they're in control of this entire game and i think cameron harris is a perfect back to replace abram smith and that defense come on man our defense is stacked like they they talk about their front seven that's fine but like you need 11 to execute on defense you need 11 they don't have the 11 they might have seven, but that four in the back, come on, man. And I'm going to tell you right now, destroying is the only is the only destroying you're going to see this weekend is DC destroying San Antonio. It's simple as that. I think if we see a destroying fake punt, the internet might explode. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine and dandy. That's fine and dandy. As long as he's he's ganking his his 38 yard field goal. I don't care. I don't care what it is. Like destroying can have all the internet publicity. I, he's great for the league, and I hope he's successful. Just not this week and further. Anytime he plays DC, right? I'm with you on that. He'll never be. I right, made Blewett. it through. <laughs> He'll never be Chris Blewett. Alex loves Chris Blewett. Jay, he plays for the Stallions. He loves Chris Blewett. I hate the Stallions. Him, so. Well, yeah. I played for the Maulers last year, and we yeah, did the yeah. Mauler show. And he, Matt Mangle, we're interviewing the punter, and Matt Mangle just calls him up in the middle of the show, and the and Chris Blewett just shows up, and he has no social media, no nothing, and I I swear that was when Alex was like, I could do this for the rest of my life, I can podcast yeah. about spring football for the rest of my life because Chris Blewett came through the door. So you know, I'd gotten up from my this. chair and fallen over dead at that moment. You know, I died a happy man. <laughs> I got to add this because I'm actually, I was also a Maulers fan. So I got to let you guys know that. 
Yeah. Um, very yeah. casual, though. Very casual, but I was a Mahler's fan, so. I, 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 I think you're the fourth one. I think you're the fourth <laughs> Mahler's fan I've ever met. I liked them when they were purple, and uh, I saw their first win, and I was like, this is my team. They suck, and I love them. Love you, Jay. Hey, man. We, uh, they, <laughs> they, made, <laughs> they made it the championship. In the I know, I know. <laughs> With a great defense, with a great defense and a questionable yeah, yeah. offense. So, I don't know. There's some uh, better offense with DC. So, it does make a difference. But, Jay, thank you. You have an open invitation. Anytime you want to come on, we do this on Monday nights for Tuesday mornings. Tell everyone how to follow you. I know you've got your own YouTube channel and Twitter. I don't know if you're on Instagram. Yeah, I'm not on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I think, what, Defending FB. And then yep. uh, YouTube is just defend the defending football show. So check it out. Pretty much the same content on here, but you get all me and I get to comment back at you and post stupid stuff. You do a there great job. He's great. Some good stuff. I do, he, uh, he just did an episode on expansion and went all out, even, even had the maps, pretty maps with yeah. colors and why he would move the iron, right? The iron Baltimore. to Baltimore. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, and how the logo fits, and how it, it like it's it's well thought out, not just the typical like swamp creature talk about expansion. Oh, I want my breakers back. He actually had like reasonings. Yeah. I'm I'm fangirling so. a little bit over that stuff. I love Fangirl. that stuff. Fangirling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay. Say your goodbyes. I don't know if you ever watch the show. I'm sure you have, but say your goodbyes. However you want to say it. All right. For the love of football, defend football, baby. Got to do it. <laughs> Alex? Alex, yours? Hey, we're going 1-0 and this week. And until next time, so long, everybody. Shields up. Jay, Webb, Alex, out.